I'm not sure how we're going to put this together, but I'm still in my pajamas. Still getting over the little whatever it was that Ian brought back from Texas. Um, slash Ecuador. <laughs> um, folks, I could get mad at the other child's mother for not doing X, Y, Z. I'm not going to do that. They didn't know he was sick. He, he was there to compete, and he did a wonderful job, and Ian did a wonderful job. They just brought back a little bug. Um, now we're just going to kind of take a peek at Cinda, who is just kind of outside. I'm going to let her um, be outside for a little bit. Um, Ian is upstairs, and I kind of stole away to do this um, to try to do it without any interruptions. And I know that I'm long-winded, and those of you that watch my videos, I really appreciate that you do. I appreciate that you leave me comments, um, whether you agree with what I speak about or disagree. It all is appreciated because it helps me to broaden my thoughts and my mind. And I like that. Um, might not change my beliefs, but you help me think about things from different perspectives, and I appreciate that. Anyway, getting into, I was just having a conversation with my friend. Hopefully she doesn't, not my friend, the dog, doesn't start barking. Because um, I really just kind of, I mean, we're just kind of looking at the truck and the four-wheeler and you know, the beautiful day that's out there that hopefully tomorrow I'll be well enough to enjoy. <laughs> I promised Ian I was going to throw him in the pool when he got back from Texas and we haven't been able to do that yet because we both had this little bug. Um, anyway, so um, we were talking and I was talking with her about um if you follow my channel for any period of time, you know that I deal with anxiety. I deal with other issues. Too many to list at this point in time. You just kind of have to follow along the journey with me. And as a young girl, it was nothing for me to attend whatever was going on, wherever. Mostly church functions because that's how I was brought up. Now, that being said, this is how I believe does not give me a license to be mean to you if your beliefs differ, and I will not do that. I will not back down from my beliefs, but I will not treat you mean or ugly because your beliefs don't align with mine. Okay, that little disclaimer out of the way, let's continue with the story. My friend and I were talking, and I was telling her, well, you know, I, I told you in the last long video that I had some revelations, epiphanies, whatever you want to call them. God dealt with my heart. He got me still and alone with no interruptions and all that good stuff for a good period of time. And a lot of healing took place and a lot of growing up took place and a lot of, oh, you need to change that took place. And I'm thankful for that. My daughter and I had an extensively long conversation Saturday when she got back, when they got back from Texas and I apologized to her, just like I said in the video that I would do. Um, and I told her, I said, you know, I am very, very quick to knock your knees out from underneath you because even though you tell me you're trying to do this better, I expect you to do, to revert back to old behavior. And I kind of wait for it. And whenever it happens, I kind of go, say, I knew you were going to do that. Instead of going, okay, so you failed. For those, for that period of time that you were getting it right, you were getting it right. So you know that you can get it right for that long, for at least that long a time. So let's do that again and go forward. Much like whenever I blew my eating plan, which is completely blown at this point, it's going to restart. It's hard to have a virus and try to maintain an eating plan whenever nothing sounds good. She's had her a good little scratch um, outside on the concrete, talking about the dog again. So anyway, whenever I talked with friends of mine that do CR with me, 
um, one of the things that was said to me was, well, you know, you know, I made it three weeks. You know that for that period of time, you could maintain the exercise plan, the um, food plan, you know, and on. I didn't, I was not eating any sweets. I, I still have not like emotionally ate, but I have not stayed and I'm sorry the camera is kind of jittery we're off the cuff guys off the cuff um still have not emotionally ate I had an ice cream last night I didn't really and I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I was going to enjoy it to be honest with you um because there was too much of it and that's one thing that I've noticed with a lot of stuff that doesn't come from my kitchen is it's too salty or the portion is way too much and you know that's one thing that my husband has noticed is like you know is, are you sure that's enough and I'm like yeah I'm sure it's enough because you know this is a normal portion so but anyway I was talking with my friend about a conversation that I had with another friend last week after whenever the kids were in Texas. I was going to prayer meeting. I had made up in my mind. There was nothing to stop me. Um, prior to that, I've been trying to do it for probably six months a year, give or take, probably longer. Um, and I couldn't get there. And I kept thinking to myself, you know, it never fails whenever I plan that, you know, plan to do this. Something happens, I'll oversleep, and, you know, it's at 10 o'clock, so whenever I'm talking oversleeping, I'm way oversleeping, and, you know, I had started to get up at 5 o'clock, that's kind of gone out the window with being sick, we're getting back in that, in the habit of that as we get better, uh, rest with this little bug thing is <laughs> crucial, <laughs> um, but, when it came down to that Tuesday while the kids were in Texas, it occurred to me, I had laid my clothes out. I was clean. All I had to do, I mean, I had laid my clothes out to my underwear and, you know, knew what shoes I was going to wear. I had, I had everything planned out and I didn't go. At the last minute, I couldn't make myself put those clothes on and walk out the door. And after a while, I sent a text to my friend and I told her, I said, you know, I cannot figure out why. It was nothing. Um, a few years ago, I think it was like 2018, might have been earlier than that. Um, our choir sang at camp meeting and there's a lot of people at camp meeting. Um, it was nothing to walk in and then back then I was on a cane. Um, it was nothing to walk in there, walk up on the stage and sing with my choir. Just like it's really nothing. I don't really think anything about it whenever we're singing together. And I was like, you know, as I sent, we were texting back and forth and as I sent the message to her of why I couldn't figure out how I could go to camp meeting and sing, but I couldn't make myself, anxiety, anxiety would just win. I couldn't make myself go to prayer meeting. It hit me. This is a more intimate setting. These are the same, these, you know, the same group of people gather every week. It varies, you know, different ones come, whatever. But this, the core group are the same people. And at some point in time, in that type setting, people kind of start to notice that you got flaws and failures and you're struggling with something and, you know, what have you. Well, as I'm thinking, as after as I, all of that hit my mind whenever I sent the text to my friend about not knowing why I could um, sing I can't meeting, sing in the choir, whatever. But these smaller engage, smaller group things, I can't seem to overcome the anxiety. Well, about the time I hit hit send on that text, it hit me. 
God spoke to my heart and he said, you know, you're vulnerable. And I said, yeah, that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And I said, so I can understand that. And I can understand that vulnerability, but part of getting better, doing better, what have you, is, you know, the Bible says, confess your sins to one another. You know, it builds you up. It helps you to not do it again. You have an accountability person, you know. So when it came down to it, the last thing that was spoken in my heart was do you, those people have faults and failures too. They have things they're struggling with. It may not be the same as yours, but the difference between you and them is pride. It was my pride that was allowing the anxiety to win. So last Tuesday, I got up. I had told my friend, I said, I'll see you tomorrow. And I got up, I got dressed, and I went to prayer meeting. And I'm going to go again. And I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to keep walking. And I'm going to keep fighting and trying until I get this right. So I hope you come along with me. Um, and I hope that out of this, the Bible says pride goeth before a fall. I don't want to fall anymore. I may, I'm, you know, things may trip me up, but I don't want to fall and be a failure. I have so much that I want to do in this life and I want to do it in mo more than anything else. I want to be a light in a dark world. I want to help other people, whether you agree with my beliefs or not, I want to be that bright spot in your day that helps you and encourages you that you can do whatever it is that you're setting out to do. So that's my thought for today. My dog's looking at me funny. <laughs> I appreciate you all so very much. Thank you for listening and admiring my truck with me. I'm sorry, it might not be much to anybody else, but I love this truck. Um, I love our ATV. I love the life that we have built together. Um, our house is not much, um, but it's ours. And I'm thankful and grateful that, you know, God blessed us with it. So until later, guys, I'm the mayor's daughter. Y'all have a wonderful day. I'll see you. Bye.